How's it going, everyone? We're here today to talk about Cook lenses. Well, it's a little bit more than that. We're here to talk about the experience of shooting module three of the cookbook using Cook lenses. This is the first time I'm actually using these lenses and this is by far the most expensive gear that I have ever used. For comparison's sake, we have the Atlas 40 here and the Cook 40 here. They cover about the same sensor area, which is Super 35, but you can see that the Cook is considerably larger. And these are the special flare version of the Cook, which means that we get this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it feels more dialed down than all the like classic anamorphic flares with like the strong blues. Like this is more of a purple, low saturation. The overall feeling that we got from these lenses is that they render a milky type of image. Everything is kind of creamy. And I guess that's the cook look. That's what we're getting used to. It was funny because in the beginning it was not that noticeable, but then the more we shot and looked at the footage, I'm like, yeah, this is definitely constant through the lenses. I feel that the Atlas has like a more elegant or more like modern look to it while the cook is a traditional, like it feels like a tool more than a fancy flashy lens. Big shout out to the folks at Raw Camera here in Vancouver that let us use all of this gear that's way beyond our budget, by the way. The other very noticeable thing is how light these rings are, like the focus ring and the iris ring are very, very light to manipulate on all the lenses, in particular on the 25. So if I just drag the ring, you can see that it keeps going way after I let go. It's not the thing that any motor will have trouble pulling focus, unlike my rehoused Lomos. Those give trouble to the Nucleus M at this point. The 25 is also wildly bigger than the other ones. We didn't have a 25 on the Atlas set, although they do make a 25 millimeters. Like this front is, I think it's 138 millimeters, and this lens is considerably heavier than the rest of the set. The rest of the set all has the same size, except for the 25, which has a larger front, and the 135, which is slightly longer than the rest of them. So it's always easy to swap them out and not have to adjust focus or anything. We used it on our opening shot, and <laughs> Lila's reaction to it was just amazing. She was like, oh my God, that's so wide. It's a very interesting lens, very unique, and definitely not the kind of thing that you can use everywhere. We also noticed that they don't render like the most perfect images, which belongs to the Cook look. We see some strong like green chromatic aberrations on high contrast edges, and that's kind of like the point with the bright backgrounds or the bright set. We didn't have it in mind originally, but as we rolled with it, we're like, yeah, this kind of shows this character in the lens. And it was, it was an interesting finding during the process. The other thing that we also learned is they're very well matched. But when looking at the footage, Blake and I were staring at it and being like, why are these so different? What's happening? Why are they so, why is this not matching at all? Even though we're using similar cameras, same settings, same lenses. And it turns out it was because we're using this Cine ND in front of it. For some reason, it's adding some heavy blue tint to these lenses and even on the lowest setting. So we, we had to ditch it at some point. It was just an interesting find because when I actually tested this filter, I did not notice that difference. The other finding regarding to using filters on these lenses is that, I gotta look this up, but I think the fronts are 112 millimeters, which means that there's like room for the filter to move around. It doesn't clamp on like the Atlas did at 114 or 4.5 inches. So what we did was we gaff taped the front of $30,000 lenses just so we could add a filter to it and have it be secure. It just goes to show that no gear is perfect, especially when you're kind of improvising a lot of stuff on the spot. They are much heavier than the Atlas lenses, like much heavier. I don't even know what this is, it's like 10 pounds? Is 10 pounds too much? 10 pounds? Sounds about right. The aperture on the whole set is 2.3 from the 25 millimeters all the way to 135, which is pretty wild uh, to get a 135 millimeters anamorphic at 2.3 aperture. It's also a very large set with seven lenses, like seven lenses and anamorphics, just unusual. 
when I went to pick these up, they come in two large cases with three lenses at each and the 135 comes separate. So it's just a lot of equipment to carry all at once. Classic two times squeeze factor. And when we look inside of them, like you can see the travel of the elements. Minimum focus is also pretty decent, around three feet for the entire set, some a little closer than three feet, some just a little further out. This looks like a front focusing design, as you can see elements traveling in there, but I might be incorrect about this. I did no research prior to shooting this video, so this is literally first-hand impressions of somebody who's never used this type of gear before. So it's just a very different look from an adapter like the Elmo 2. Like imagine, it's, it's just so different. And you can really see that designing and integrating all of the optics for a whole set creates a unified look that is just something much more challenging to do on the DIY universe. We have the two 40 millimeters here. We have the Atlas 40 and the Cook 40. And in terms of budget, the Atlas is 10 grand, the Cook is 30 grand. Is this lens three times better than this lens? It, I don't know, I really would like to do some more research to figure out why this costs three times more. Is it the mechanics? Is it the optics? Is it the design? Is it the brand? Like the Cook look is a registered trademark. So being able to buy into that one specific look as Trago says it, if you want the Cook look, you shoot with these, but if you want something different, it's very hard to make these look like something else. So if you're buying into this idea, you are committed to this one look. If we decided later that we wanna change everything about this, this module and have it on an entirely different visual style, I think it's gonna give us a hell of a nightmare just to tweak things and try to work around it. They also feature a very different type of distortion when it comes to anamorphics. They show pincushion type of distortion instead of barrel distortion. So they bow in instead of bowing out. But ultimately, if I had endless amounts of money, which one would I rent? That's a very hard question. It's a very hard question, Blake. I gotta say, I am mesmerized by the look that we're getting out of this. And I don't know if I'm biased because I know it's more expensive. It's a thing to think about. Do I like this more because I know it costs more? Like in a blind test, would I be like, oh, that was so much superior. That's something that we can try to arrange later, but at this point, I'm pretty happy with what we got with both. The diplomatic answer. I think I'd use the Atlas for more like edgy stuff. It's weird, I don't think anybody ever said this, but it feels crisper than the Cook in terms of the image itself, like throwing terms like micro contrast. I feel the Cook is very milky. You look at the image and the image involves you, embraces you in a way that the Atlas doesn't. I feel this would shoot drama and make it way easier on the eyes than the Atlas. We also only shot this in high key situations and it really works for high key stuff. Uh, the roll off on the highlights is pretty, pretty nice. And I feel the contrast ratio is different between these lenses in terms of how it behaves at highlights and how it behaves at the shadows. So I'd go for this for like a more dreamy, wow, dreamy, that's like so classic. <laughs> Say something dreamy and point to a, a unique, different, unusual type of lens that's just like such a cliche. Thinking about two films that I shot before, Up and Away, which is my graduation project, it's like a harsher sci-fi post-apocalyptic story. I think I'd go with the Atlas. I think the harshness of that world is well matched by how the Atlas delivers an image. While if I were to shoot Multiverse Dating for Beginners, which is another short that I DP'd, I think I would go for the cooks. I think the look of it lends itself to that story in a way that serves it better than the Atlas would with its harshness, the flares and everything. Did we have the budget at the time? Absolutely not. After we shot that first part of the video, I went and did a little more research on these and figured out what the little I means, like the cook I or slash I, I don't know how to say it. It's the name of a protocol for metadata capture and it's Cook's attempt at uh, creating a standard for adding metadata from the lenses onto the film files that are being captured. 
So your camera has to be able to read the metadata or it has to have a Limo port that can store these values. And the amount of information that is collected, like you get focal length, you get exact aperture, stop, your focus distance for every frame of the shot, among lots of other info, which means embedding electronics in multiple levels inside the lenses. And that also helps increasing the price to the $30,000, very clearly. That does help to films that have a heavier VFX workflow that you need to collect all of this data and if it just comes with the shot, that's amazing. More manufacturers should incorporate this. I was reading the documentation, apparently Canon, no, Digi Gear, and some other makers already have like their own commands using this protocol, but it's not very common. The other thing that we noticed is that these lenses have warping as you pan them. It doesn't happen on all the focal lengths and it usually happens on the outside of the 4x3 Super 35 frame, but we recorded it anyway so you can see it and feel less bad about your warping DIY setup, I guess. Uh, the last thing is all these lenses breathe as you focus and it's not that bad. It's pretty great actually. So these were some of my afterthoughts, like went to bed, thought about it, and was like, oh, I should really add to that video. And this is it, we're shooting with the 25 on there, shooting on the 50 on here. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Shit the out.